Good morning, all, um, and welcome to uh, this, this um, Tuesday, March 8th committee meeting of the Commerce Committee. Um, I'd like to just welcome all uh, my leadership and colleagues. Um, I know there's a lot of meetings going on simultaneously, um, and so uh, folks will be juggling with all of that. Um, and to that end, we will have votes left open um, and we'll uh, talk to Madam Clerk as we get to that point to announce uh, the time by which they will be um, opened until. Um, so comments from my colleagues, uh, my co-chair, uh, Representative Curry. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to see everyone here. Glad we're able to move business along today with our first JF meeting. Uh, and I look forward to a robust discussion. Thank you, um, Representative Curry. Senator Martin. Good, good morning. Oh, hang on, we're getting an echo. Good. Okay. I think that's better. All right. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you, but uh, we got this new JF language for HB 5266 a couple of minutes before uh, this meeting here, uh, 13 minutes ago. So we had some questions on it. If you don't mind, I, we'd like to hold it and so that we can uh, have a discussion with, uh, with you and uh, afterwards. Um, yes, uh, Senator Martin, uh, what number on our agenda is that, sir? I, I believe it's item number nine. Item number nine. Oh, uh, 5266. Uh, what? The work, the yeah, work release. 5266. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, you want to hold that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, Senator Martin. Other remarks, sir? I am, other than that, I am good to go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. And Rep Buckby? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, good, good morning. Good to be back. Good to be back in the <clears throat> um, Can we hear you? Yeah. You're moving, okay. Bill. All right. Sorry about that, so man. That I'm trying to dance around with volume controls and everything else here, so. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Good to be back in the building. Good to be uh, back in committee and uh, looking forward to, again, as Rep. Curry said, a very healthy debate. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Buckby. Um, so we will now proceed to um, item number three on our calendar for today. Um, these are bills to be considered for final action, and there are 10 of them. Um, so at this point, um, I would entertain opening up a consent calendar if in fact that might be appropriate. Madam Chair, is I don't there believe, a motion? I don't believe there will be uh, a consent calendar offered um, for today. Okay, yep. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, so let's move on um, to item number one, which is SB 97. It's an act concerning Connecticut innovations and a study um, of the private equity investment. The, um, this is a JF to the floor. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Um, so this is a, a placeholder bill as we typically have in our committee for the various agencies that we are working with, this one being CI, um, in view of our session. And by the way, this one is one of the shortest in our legislative history by virtue of the calendar. Um, and so we're just trying to uh, stay nimble um, should there be a need to. Um, if, uh, discussion. Yes, uh, Representative Buckby. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through some discussion, we looked at uh, a few bills that seem to overlap each other um, between this, this bill and there's another CI bill that's basically the same. There's one House and one Senate bill that are uh, placeholders with the same language and the same um, intention, I believe. Uh, so we have discussed, uh, so we've had some discussion on supporting one of the two. 
uh, thus supporting two of the placeholder bills. But because they are so redundant between, uh, uh, if you look at Senate Bill 60, uh, 97, Senate Bill 100, um, let me look here again, uh, House Bill 5122 and House Bill 5123, these are uh, basically two and two of the same bill at this point. So uh, I, I would say on the, on the first bill, I would be a no, just because that's already covered in uh, Senate Bill 100. Um, and it was the same thing would be to uh, five and six on the agenda for today. Um, oh, thank you for your remarks, sir. Um, I, I, I'll just kind of walk through these. So um, 97 is clearly a placeholder bill specific to uh, CI, Connecticut Innovations. Um, and then uh, Senate Bill 100 is um, a, a, globe, a more global bill that is economic development, which indeed would encompass um, CI, but it is a much broader scope on that. Um, and then items number five and items number six. Uh, five is once again, a placeholder bill um, uh, regarding uh, the Department of Economic and Community Development. Clearly, they are, they are overlapping, but the scopes um, uh, can exceed each other. So, um, and then when you get down to item number six, which is 5123, you will see that is specific to manufacturing. And um, although we have a bill in from the Manufacturing Caucus, we keep that um, specific to uh, allow us if there is anything that goes on. Once again, because we are short session. So with all due respect, I understand clearly what you're saying. And yes, there, there are overlaps and parallels. Um, this is all by virtue of means that we, we, this committee can be nimble. In the past, we've done the same thing for each one of the agencies we oversee as well as the topics. Um, they have served us well, um, and in other instances, we they have just remained on the calendar. So it's all by virtue of uh, allowing us to to be nimble. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, those comments. Are there further comments? Uh, seeing none, I would ask the clerk to uh, kindly call the roll. Mayor Hartley. Senator Hartley. Yeah. I, yes, Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Okay. Representative Curry? Right. Rep Representative Curry votes in the affirmative. Okay. Senator Cohen? Then I'll pass. Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle? And then, um, I Representative Rochelle, yes. All right. Senator Martin? Senator Martin votes no. Representative Buckby? Representative Buckby votes no. Representative Anderson? Representative Anderson votes no. Representative DJ Van Carlo? Representative DJ Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum? Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco? Representative Fusco votes in the negative. Representative Garibay? Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton? Representative Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanou? Representative Lanou votes no. Representative Leeper? Representative Leeper votes yes. Can I have that one more time, please? Representative Leeper votes yes. Thank you. Senator McCrory? Senator Miller? Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman? 
Representative Nuccio? Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams? Representative Williams votes yes. Senator Sampson? Representative Thomas? Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood? Rep Wood votes yes. Representative Yaccarino? No. All right, I'll set Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to item number two on our agenda, SB 98, an act extending the manufacturing apprenticeship tax credit to pass through entities. This um, colleagues is a JF to finance. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Um, and so this is a topic that is very familiar to this committee, having worked on this and moved it for a number of years. Um, uh, and this hopefully is going to be the year that it does in fact get, we've got it through both chambers in the past, but to get it um, on the governor's desk and inked. Um, it allows for the uh, pass-through entities to claim this manufacturing apprenticeship tax credit against the personal income tax. It helps to level the playing field for our small and medium-sized manufacturers um, and also helps to um, continue to um, contribute and grow the pipeline for much needed workforce um, uh, um, individuals. So uh, is there a discussion? Chair. Yes, Senator Martin. Madam Chair, I, uh, hi, Madam Chair. Sorry, I'm not quick with all this uh, <laughs> raising of the hand. So I totally agree no. that this has been in, for, in front of us, and I'm hoping you all can hear me, uh, that this has been uh, on our docket for a few years now. And for, for the life of me, I don't understand why we can't get this across the finish line. And I hope uh, like you do that uh, this is going to be the year. This is simply going to cost the state approximately about a little over a million, million four. And uh, it's a one-time cost of like $100,000. But leveling the playing field with C corporations and if we're- However, leveling, because they've got in this- In to leveling the playing field with corporations, uh, this, if we're serious about developing our, our apprenticeship program, in order to increase our workforce development, then we need to start uh, approving and change, uh, adopting policies like this so that we can do that. So Madam Chair, I'm gonna be voting yes for this bill. Thank you, Senator Martin. Uh, are there, is there further discussion? Um, yes, Madam Chair. See here. Yes, uh, uh, Representative Perry. Yep. Uh, I just want to add my uh, voice to support for this piece of legislation. Uh, my first go around on the Commerce Committee. Uh, I know some of you have been here for a number of years uh, and have tried to move this along. So I look forward uh, to joining in that fight to see if we can get this over the finish line. Uh, we did once before. Unfortunately, at the time, uh, the governor vetoed it. Uh, but I think given uh, what we have now not necessarily come out of or continue to work through with the pandemic, um, with regards to a number of our startup businesses. Um, our friends at CBIA have, have mentioned that this has been one of the results of the pandemic and something like this would be able to assist uh, those businesses and just give them one more um, way in which that they can thrive here in the state of Connecticut. So I, I do hope my colleagues join us in support of this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Curry. Um, further discussion? Uh, seeing none, um, Madam Clerk, if I'm missing someone, give me a holler here. Um, a kindly call the roll. Senator Hartley. Uh, Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry votes yes. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. 
Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes yes. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes yes. One more time, please. Sorry, Representative Buckby votes yes. Thank you, Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Representative Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Representative Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanoum. Representative Lanoum votes yes. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. EDC Senator McCoy votes yes. Uh, manufacturing officer Paul. Senator Miller. I'm here, Ginger. Just having problems turning everything on. Uh, Senator Miller votes yes. Thank you, Ginger. Thanks. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes yes. Representative Williams. Start it again. Representative Williams votes yes. Thank you. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood. Representative Wood votes yes. Representative Yacarino. Representative Yacarino votes yes. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to item number three, SB 100, an act concerning economic development issues affecting the state of Connecticut. This is a JF to the floor. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I moved. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Um, this we had a bit of a discussion about uh, as we started our committee is a placeholder um, uh, uh, under the um, rubric of economic development for the state of Connecticut. Um, is there discussion? Um, seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, could you kindly call the roll? Senator Hartley. Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry in the affirmative. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. One more time, please. Senator Cohen votes yes. Thank you. Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes yes. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Representative Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Representative Hampton votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Hampton votes yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Representative Lanou.
Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams. Representative, Representative Williams votes yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Great. Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood. Rep Wood votes yes. And Representative Yacarino. Yes, Representative Yacarino votes yes. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to item number four on our agenda today. This is SB 219, an act eliminating the maximum fee payable to Notary Republic. This is a JFS to the floor. That is LCO 2821. Is there a motion? Second. Uh, help me out again. Who made that motion, please? Oh, okay. Rep Hampton moved it and Rep Curry or Wood seconded it. Representative right? Wood. Oh, okay. Representative Wood seconded. Okay. Um, and so, um, colleagues, um, item number four uh, is um, will cap uh, the uh, fee on notarial acts that are performed by um, a municipality, a town clerk specifically. Um, and that ch and, and the, num the, the amount is changed from five dollars to seven dollars. Um, and then uh, for other notarial acts that are not performed by a municipality, there no longer will be a cap applied. Um, is there um, discussion on item number four? Um, Seeing none, am I missing anybody? Senator, Senator, Martin. Senator Martin. Senator Martin. My yeah, apologies, sir. Go ahead. So, uh, thank you for following me. I uh, just want to quickly say thank you for making that change regarding uh, separating the municipality and charging a fee and uh, opening up for the uh, private sector to charge whatever they want. I thought that was a great uh, suggestion uh, from the committee. Uh, leadership to do that. So thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Martin. And we appreciate you bringing this forward to us and having this discussion. Um, uh, and I think we've got a solid proposal here in front of us. Uh, other uh, comments, questions on this um, issue? Yes, Rep. Thomas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Martin was faster on the raise hand, um, but uh, I just want to also thank the committee. I had some concerns about making sure that lower economic um, uh, budgets could still uh, very easily access notary services. So I was happy to see that municipal level um, guarantee uh, built in. So thank you for that. Thank you, Rep. Thompson. Um, much appreciated and uh, in agreement, uh, Madam. I do not see any other hands raised. Uh, Madam Clark, if I'm missing someone, give me a holler here. If not, uh, we can proceed to a roll call, Madam. Senator Hartley. Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry in the affirmative. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. One more time, please. Senator Cohen votes yes. Thank you. Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes yes. Representative Buckby. 
Sorry, Representative Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson. Represent, did they call on me? Yeah. I couldn't hear. Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Rep Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanou. Uh, Representative Lanou. Can I get that one more time, please? Um, Madam Chair, can you please advise what the bill number is? I just stepped in a meeting. We are voting on uh, Senate Bill 219, JFS to the floor, LCO 2821. Uh, Representative Lanou votes yes. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory. McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams. Rep. Williams, yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. As it is. Representative yeah. Thomas votes yes. Yeah. Representative Wood. Representative Yaccarino. Representative Yacarina votes yes. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, that will bring us to item number five on, on our agenda today, which is House Bill 5122. This is an act concerning the Department of Economic and Community Development and Economic Development Issues. This um, is a JF to the floor, and I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Co-Chair. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Rep. Rochelle. Um, discussion. I think we kind of had a discussion at the top of the meeting here today, a placeholder bill uh, allowing us to be nimble should there be need uh, to accommodate committee um, uh, interests um, and uh, objectives. Um, discussion. Is there any discussion? Um, seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, if you could kindly call the roll. Okay. Senator Martin has. Senator has Martin. Said, thank you. That's okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm gonna be voting no on this just because the item five and item three are pretty much the same. So I, I understand what you're saying about regarding being nimble, but you know, there are, we're always fighting for the floor, you know, fighting on the floor to be heard. And uh, I think we, we have other vehicles uh, that uh, we can use should we need them. And item three and five are just too similar. So I'm gonna be a no on this. Thank you, Senator Martin. And we're always interested in having you be heard in this committee, sir. Um, and thanks for your input, much appreciated. Further comments on um, the item before us and seeing none. Madam Clerk, if that is correct, then you may proceed to call the roll. Senator Hartley. A Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Rep Curry. Uh, Rep Curry votes yes. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. 
Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes no. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes no. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes no. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Rep Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the negative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Representative Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanou. Representative Lanou votes no. I'm sorry, can I get that one more time, Representative? Sure. Uh, Representative Lanou votes no. Thank you. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory. Senator Miller. Senator McCoy votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams. Williams, yes. One more time, please. Williams, yes. Thank you. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. And we need we need one representative Wood. Representative Yaccarino. Representative Yaccarino votes no. I'll sign Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to item number six on today's agenda. This is House Bill 5123, an act concerning manufacturing needs in the state of Connecticut. This is a JF to the floor. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, is there a second? Seconded. Thank you, Rep. Garvey. Um, and discussion. This is uh, another item that I think we discussed at the top of uh, today's agenda. It is a placeholder bill. This is um, relative to manufacturing and the work that we do on the Manufacturing Caucus. Um, discussion from committee members. Um, uh, Madam not... Chair. Uh, yes. Yeah. I would just reiterate your comments um, to uh, the good ranking senator uh, that while we have a number of placeholders, I think that we have had uh, a few conversations now to ensure that anything moving forward will be done um, inclusive of bipartisan talks. So uh, while we understand why folks may not be voting for this, uh, we are looking forward to discussions should uh, we need to utilize these uh, bills. So thank you. Thank you for that, um, uh, Mr. Co-Chair. That is, that is our practice, indeed. Um, has been all along, and appreciate those comments. Further comments uh, from committee members? Um, seeing none, uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Senator Hartley. Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry in the affirmative. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes yes. 
One more time, please. Senator Martin votes yes. Thank you. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative DJ Van Carlo. Representative DJ Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Yes. Representative Lanil. Representative Lanil votes yes. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes yes. Representative Williams. Williams, yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Oh, Representative yeah. Thomas votes yes. yes. Okay. Representative Wood. Representative Yaccarino. Representative Yaccarino Yac votes yes. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to item number seven on today's agenda. This is House Bill 515. Two, five. This is an act concerning a study of economic development considerations re related to livestock processing facilities in the state. This is a JF to the floor. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second, uh, Senator Martin. Thank you, Senator Martin. Um, uh, you will recall the testimony um, on this bill uh, from the Commissioner of Agriculture who uh, referenced the fact that there is a dearth of livestock processor, processing facilities in the state of Connecticut. Um, and as we continue to try to grow our agricultural sector, um, this becomes even more important um, to us and especially um, in trying to uh, extend certain uh, strands of the agricultural market. Um, are there um, comments or discussion? Um, yes, uh, Representative Curry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And just a, a quick comment and um, kind of following in what you were talking about with regards to the commissioner of DOAG. And while DOAG may not be noted in the bill itself, uh, I believe in conversations with DECD, uh, it seems as though that they would be um, reaching out and using DOAG uh, to the best of their ability around this type of study. So I just want to make sure folks were aware of that. Thank, thank you, Representative Curry and um, Rep Buckley. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to touch base on this again, that uh, there's been a number of things we've discussed in this committee this year around agriculture, which is fantastic for those of us who live in an ag community to see. But uh, I hope that this study uh, is done quickly and uh, we can get to actually putting some action behind this as that's what really the concern is, is getting action behind uh, these processing facilities and, and uh, helping out our farmers in the state. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, th thank you, Rep Buckby, and it, totally agree um, with you on those remarks. Uh, we have, let's see, further comments? Um, don't see any hands raised um, and seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, you may call the roll. Senator Hartley. It's Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry in the affirmative. One more time, Representative. 
Representative Curry in the affirmative. Thank you. Senator Cohen? Senator Cohen votes yes. One more time, please. Senator Cohen votes yes. Thank you. Representative Rochelle? Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin? Senator Martin votes yes. Representative Buckby? Representative Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson? Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative Dijo Van Carlo? Rep Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum? Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco? Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay? Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton? Representative Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanou? Representative Lanou votes yes. Representative Leeper? Representative Leeper votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Leeper votes yes. Thank you. Senator McCrory? Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller? Senator Miller votes yes. One more time, please. Senator Miller votes yes. Senator Needleman, Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes yes. Representative Williams. Williams, yes. Senator Sampson, Representative Thomas. Get it. Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood. Representative Yaccarino. Representative Yaccarino votes yes. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to our next item on today's agenda. That is item number eight. This is House Bill 5264. This is an act concerning the approval of financial aid applications filed by Connecticut Innovations Corp Incorporated. This is a JFS to the floor and it is LCO 2820. Um, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Rep. Exum. Yes, thanks. Good to see you, ma'am. Um, uh, moved and seconded. Uh, so this uh, is comes to us from Connecticut Innovations. Um, they are seeking to uh, address an issue uh, regarding their flexibility um, on authorizing uh, approved applications. Back in the day when they were first stood up, it was a cap of 150,000. Um, and obviously uh, times have changed as have dollar amounts. And so they are seeking a, a $500,000 cap for um, approvals. Um, there is another part to uh, LCO 2820, which deems board members to have resigned if they miss three consecutive meetings um, or do not have attendance of at least 50% of the, um, the meetings in a year's time, allowing the chairman in such a case to fill um, that position uh, for, the unex for, the, for the term that is um, in existence at that point. Uh, the testimony was that uh, the, they have approved over a hundred such applications in a year's time. They are a very small team. Um, and for them to be able to uh, have the bandwidth and the scope um, uh, in this sector, they are seeking a change because the, the dollar cap goes back to, I, I believe it's almost 15 plus years or so. Um, and then with regard to the board members, they 
when they don't have the requisite number of board members, they don't make a quorum, they have called in these people who are all volunteers, very professional, high, um, highly skilled um, individuals, and they can't have a meeting. So it's a waste of the, these volunteers' time, and it, it, this will just help them to move business um, and uh, not be uh, utilizing board members' times um, uh, carefully. Uh, is there discussion um, on the item before us? Yes, Senator Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, I like the second part of this. I think uh, if we can provide the, uh, the ability for the agency to, uh, the uh, agency to, uh, I guess, solicit temporary members to the board, uh, because of, uh, for whatever reason, that those part members may not be showing up. I think that's good so that they can get voting out of the way and move business off, off the docket, so to speak. Regarding the flexibility between the 150 and increasing it to $500,000, I hit the pause button here just a little bit. You know, we get, we've transparency is important, I think, to all of us. And uh, we have board members for a reason in order to have an, be another set of eyes as to decisions that are being made by various agencies. Uh, maybe I, I need to hear or learn a little bit more regarding this. So I'm gonna say, you know, I'll, I'll remain open to it. But for now, I know we talked a little bit about it during, in our screening, but uh, for me, I'm just sort of hitting the pause button. Maybe I need to learn a little bit more about it. So I'm going to be voting no, uh, but with the understanding that um, I guess I got to be sold a little bit more as to why we should be increasing this from 150000 to $500,000. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your comments. And, and uh, Representative Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to be voting no on this bill because I don't think government should be in the uh, business of picking winners. Uh, government's a poor allocator of capital. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your comments, yeah. um, sir. Um, this is um, basically yeah. our um, venture capital arm, um, which is uh, primarily focused on those small companies that um, uh, need that bridge in order to get to second round. Um, I will note that the Connecticut Innovations has had a very, um, a, a very successful um, tenure, and uh, and as they continue to uh, expand their scope, um, they have focused on some of the most important sectors in the state of Connecticut, bio being one of them. Uh, but I, I I do hear you, sir, and appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and let's see, we have um, hands raised. Yes, Rep. Curry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with regards to the uh, increase in, to the $500,000, um, I believe that that will simply allow CI to act a bit more nimbly um, because there is a second part of this particular statute in which there's a 12 month period that they can't exceed money already that they've given plus this new application. And so if we've already tied their hands to that 150, that ties that for that 12 month period. And so giving this increase would uh, prevent because they do see a number of these folks coming back seeking additional capital because things may be going very well for them and they may be an additional influx to continue that growth. Um, so this is simply just another mechanism to allow additional growth within our business sector here in the state of Connecticut. Uh, and I will be supportive today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Co-Chair. Um, and, and yes, Rep Buckby. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to reiterate um, what the good ranking member said initially as well to, to, uh, to touch on that. My concern is the, um, I know there is an issue with the board showing up. Uh, the board's not getting there. It seems like this is almost a band-aid to getting board members to showing up because that's that check and balance of the board member. If they can't get the board members to show up, well, now we're just giving them the opportunity to give more money um, as opposed to the check and balance of having that board there. So I think the solution really is to fix that problem and having the board members uh, situation rectified. And it is a pretty big jump of dollars. And, and I know sometimes we talk in large amounts here, 
And sometimes we're talking $2 at a clip when it comes to a notary. But uh, I think that's a pretty big jump from 150 to 500,000. I get it. I understand the point. But in that same respect, I think there needs to be that board and that piece has to be fixed before we allocate more funds to what it is. That's just my two cents on it. Um, again, as uh, Senator Martin said as well, just hit, hitting that pause button. Let's see what the real problem here is. If the board's not showing up, well, let's just offer to give more without going to the board. I think it's more important to have that board fixed and have that progression stay the way it is just for checks and balances. So I'll be voting no on this, but certainly following progression and, and see where this may go uh, as it gets to the House floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rep. Buck. We appreciate your comments. Um, and it is true that, you know, we're dealing with, you know, highly skilled doctors, PhDs, other, you know, founders and so forth. And many times, of course, in our pre-COVID world, they are traveling, cannot physically be there. These are per in, in person meetings. Um, and the, you know, the the thought was to get those board positions filled. Um, it puts a little pressure on board members when they decide to join on to, um, you know, the board. Uh, and, and that's good too, it's accountability. But the fact remains that these are highly skilled, highly paid individuals who are doing this on a vol volunteer basis. And we do need their input. They're, they're in the world um, in which this, um, these initiatives are targeted for. So, so their input is very important. Um, so yeah, I hear you very clearly. Um, and I see some other hands. Yes, Senator McCory. Yeah, I, um, how you doing, um, um, hey. Madam Chair? Um, I just, I was, I was back and forth. I didn't hear you explain the first part. I heard, I heard something about um, they missed three board meetings. I understood the part, but you said so also they got a, they're, we're increasing the amount that we can, I didn't hear that part. The, the amount so, one. Yeah, if I might, um, Senator McCory, uh, presently right now, and this kind of goes back to when the Connecticut Innovations was first stood up, uh, there mm -hmm. was a cap on uh, the amount of dollars that the, they, the CI team, could approve without going to their financial board. That number was $150,000. That number, you know, is very dated now. Um, mm -hmm. That's for 20 years plus. Right. And so, they, so the request was to move that ceiling to 500000 Okay. And my last question, I don't know if we can answer this, but maybe it's an appropriation question. How much do we allocate uh, funding for two Connecticut uh, innovations? Um, we, so it's... Do we know? Yeah, it's... it's if we're, if we're moving, the only reason I ask is if we're moving from 150 to 500, the amount of resources they have might be have to mod be modified also. So I'm just I'm just asking, how much are we putting over at um, CT, uh, CT, Kinetic Innovations currently in and maybe we need to have a conversation about also increasing that amount. That's yeah. why I asked. So they are recapitalized to the finance committee bond agenda. And I'm not sure if our OFA um, anal analyst is on with us, Evelyn. Are you, I don't have that number, uh, Senator Corey, at my fingertips. I can, of course, get it right. for you. And I'm not sure Evelyn is with us um, at the well, moment. Okay. Our I can get that number for you, Senator, um, but yeah. uh, Senator Hartley is correct. We periodically provide state bond funds to CI for recapitalization of their programs. Okay, so they so they pretty much bond it. I mean, supported by bonding for from us, not not a, a allocate, not a, a, a allotment from the state. That's right. Not yeah, it's bond allocations, not appropriations. Okay, good. All right, that's all I was asking. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. And I think uh, Rep. Yaccarino, did you have your hand up, sir? Good to see you, Madam Chair. Good to see you. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, I apologize, I got in a little, little late today. I supported this in the past, but could you just explain uh, why we're going from 150 to 500, which is $350,000, and the process as far as the, how stringent it is? And it's a lot of money, and I have no problem if it's for the right project, or, you know, obviously not every project works, but the rationale for the increase, who, who wanted that increase, and um, the money's existing currently. So there's three questions, I think. So um, Rep Iacarino, it com the request comes to us through uh, the ED, the executive director of CI, um, who you know typically puts in uh, legislative requests, as you know, being um, a, a tenured member on this committee. Um, and um, 
and you're also very, um, I think, uh, 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 cognizant of the projects that CI has done, most notably in um, the New Haven area in the bio sector. Right. Uh, the uh, initial cap was $150,000 that the uh, CI could approve without going to their finance board, their finance committee. Um, and in this world, you know, it's all about being nimble um, because as these venture opportunities present themselves, it's, um, you know, a very fast moving uh, agenda. So the request was to try to raise the ceiling to 500 um, in view of the fact that small team, um, you know, not the original ceiling goes back to the, the startup of CI um, and uh, because of the, 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 the amount of deals that they have been handling in a, in a very a rapid um, succession. Thank you. And then, so when they apply for it, they'll still go through the same process, although the board members might not be there. Is there a problem that the board members aren't showing up? I know you said their people are flying around and doing things, but I would think that most of the time the board members would, would want to be there because they have an interest because they're probably putting up some of their own money or at least part of this, this board through the VC end of it. Um, yeah, well, I don't believe they could be involved in a, a, a deal okay. that comes before yeah. them from a personal interest standpoint. Um, but in fact, you know, because of who they are, um, you know, they're, and, and it, it goes two ways. One, you know, you, you need to establish a quorum. And for all of those members who are there, um, you know, that's time from their calendar. Once again, this is a volunteer uh, initiative. Um, and then the other piece of this, the other very important piece of it is that, you know, they need to move the business very rapidly. It's the same discussion we're having with regard to uh, addressing the ceiling, um, you know, having formerly been 150,000. So, but, but I appreciate that, but the world of Zoom, you would think that the board members could do it by via Zoom and not bringing in other folks. I mean, we, some, some of us are in the LLB today, some of us are our homes or businesses. We could, it's, we're so mobile today. That's, I, I just would think that the board members would want to have a say because that's just their role. I'm not, yes. you know, and I, listen, I, we, I, I think these pro programs do work for the most part. I'm just trying to get a feel. Why would we bring other people in when we, we could do it through via Zoom? Well, you know, that's a good point. And I, I, I don't believe that they have done that to this this point, maybe they can. Um, I think that there have been some attendance issues, um, you know, and once again, they are very appreciative to the volunteers that they have recruited. Um, and so this is an effort to um, be respectful of everyone's time. All right, one last question. I, off of Senator Curry, I'm not sure if I could, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he, we want information for our committee. And if we could get that somehow. Senator McCoy, Senator McCoy, I apologize. What did I say, McKinney? Oh. It was his birthday, yes. Oh, Curry. So, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> so if, if Senator McCoy, to his point, I think we could use some of that information. And I appreciate uh, everything you do. I, I, Like I said, I've always supported, see, I'm a big supporter of Connecticut Innovations. I Obviously, the money's got to be, um, not, every pro, not, every, not every deal is going to work. We have to realize that. But most deals, we want them to work, obviously. Uh, I was just surprised, a little surprised at the, at the increase, although 150 I thought was low, to be honest here, because you need so much money in these, these deals. But we need to have some sort of, um, some more information, I think, you know, for us. Um, yes, thank you. And I think that your comments and Senator McCory's question have been duly noted and our OFA um, uh, will get back to us and we'll, of course, share that with all committee members. All right. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank, you. Th thank you, Representative Yaccarino. Um, and do I see other hands? I do not. Am I missing anyone, Madam Clerk? If not, then you may proceed to call the roll, Madam. Senator Hartley. Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry votes yes. <laughs> Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle. 
Representative Rochelle votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Thank you. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes no. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes no. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes no. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Representative Dijo Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Exum votes yes. One more time. Representative Exum votes yes. Thank you. Sorry, you just yeah. got to come on the screen. <laughs> okay. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the negative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Dan Hampton votes yes. Representative Lanou. Representative Lanou votes no. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams. Williams, yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood. Rick Wood votes yes. Representative Yacarino. Representative Yacarino votes yes. With the hope that time, the please. board, I vote, Representative Yacarino votes yes. The hope that the board actually votes via Zoom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, all set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, that brings us um, to colleagues of uh, item number nine on today's agenda, which is going to be held. That is a, a proposal to us from the uh, Manufacturing Caucus, the CMC. Uh, this will be held for further um, discussions. And we will move on to item number 10, which is House Bill 5267. This is an act concerning the Department of Economic and Community Development's strategic plan regarding the promotion of arts and culture. This is a JF to the floor. Um, do I have um, a motion? So moved. Uh, so moved by Senator Cohen. Cohen. Thank you, madam. Um, a second, is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Representative Wood, thank you. Um, and so you'll recall the testimony on this from the Arts and Culture uh, Alliance uh, is simply pointing out the fact that the arts and culture is not specified in the statewide marketing strategic plan, um, which if I might anecdotally comment is almost counterintuitive. Um, and I will ask, um, is there any discussion on this? I, um, is Senator Martin, did, did you have your hand up, sir? No, I think you no. need a motion. Oh, did we not? Uh, we, we have a motion. I thought we had a motion from Senator Cohen and seconded by Senator Kerry, and now we're into discussion. Okay. All right. Um, continent, discussion from committee members on this item. Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, you can proceed to call the roll. Senator Hartley. In the affirmative, Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Thank you. Representative Curry. Representative Curry votes yes. 
One more time, please. Representative Curry votes yes. Senator Cohen? Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle? Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin? Senator Martin votes yes. One more time, please. Senator Martin votes yes. Thank you. Representative Buckby? Representative Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson? Representative Anderson votes yes. Representative Di Giovancarlo? Representative Di Giovancarlo votes yes. Representative Exum? Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco? Representative Fusco votes in the affirmative. Representative Garibay? Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton? Representative Hampton votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Hampton votes yes. Thank you. Representative Lanou? Representative Lanou votes yes. Representative Leeper? Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes in affirmative. Senator Miller. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes yes. Representative Williams. Williams is yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Representative Wood. Rep Wood votes yes. Representative Yacarino. Representative Yacarino votes yes. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. That brings us to um, section four of today's agenda. And there are um, two items, item A and item B, um, proposed bills to a vote to draft. Um, now, I'm advised that we could um, entertain these uh, on a voice vote without objection. Let me just uh, call them out. Um, item A is SB 112. This is an act concerning funding for specialty, especially chemical and water treatment manufacturing facility and global research and development laboratory for the marine industry. Um, and the second item B is SB 113, and that is an act concerning bonds for the state um, for a handicapped accessible platform at the Waterbury stop of the Naugatuck rail line. Um, so we can, um, I will entertain um, a motion um, to, uh, to, uh, to draft item A and B uh, without Objection uh, for a voice vote. So moved. Thank you. Um, is there Madam a Chair, second? Madam Chair, uh, we're going to, uh, we have, uh, we won't be able to do that because but we have some that are going to be voting a no on this bill. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So then um, we uh, had a motion from uh, uh, Representative Curry, which will be withdrawn. Uh, I with, withdraw said motion. Thank you. I'm not sure I heard a second on that. Did I miss someone? Okay, so we didn't even get to second. That's fine. Okay, so um, so item A uh, is, uh, as I said, SB 112, um, and I will um, entertain a motion on to draft that. So moved. Thank you. Um, is there a second to draft second. one? Uh, uh, 
Do we get a second? Oh, Senator Senator Martin, thank you very much. Discussion, um, this was testimony which actually came to us from Greece, I think, um, uh, by the uh, executive director of uh, um, an international company uh, which has relocated to Connecticut, um, is seeking to scale and expand into other lines. They happen to also have a, a niche market. Um, they are um, hoping to be able to come under the uh, economic uh, development umbrella um, of, of, of DECD programs. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, okay, I don't see any at the moment. Um, Madam Clerk. Representative Anderson. Okay, oh, Rep. Anderson, my apologies, sir. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, my reason for the no vote will be things I referred to before. I mean, we're going to give a multi-million dollar company a million dollars. If there's a demand for this, then then there should be revenue for it. So it's more goes to my philosophy, picking winners versus letting the market decide. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your um, comments. Uh, this is hopefully about scaling more business here in the state of Connecticut. Let's see, do we have further? Uh, yeah, Rep, uh, Rep McQuarrie. Excuse me, Senator McQuarrie, pardon me. No, I gotta go to the principal <laughs> office, right? Sorry. <laughs> so, again, my, I, I came to the apologies. game. Yeah. You said it's a multi uh, uh, international company that's coming to Connecticut, and what, what do they like to do with DCD? Uh, yeah, so they're looking to try to bring in other lines. Um, there is a Florida company um, which they are seeking to um, acquire, expand here in Connecticut, more jobs, um, right. more revenue. Yeah, and they they need support from us economically, financially. Yeah. They That's are, they are. Yes, they are <laughs> hoping to be able to get um, the ability to. Um, it's I I'm, I'm recalling this, the purchasing of physically tanks, which they store these chemicals in, which are then um, used in the marine industry. OK, OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, do we have further hands raised? I see none. Um, seeing none, um, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Senator Hartley. Yes, a Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Uh, Representative Curry in the affirmative. Senator Cohen. Senator Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Martin votes yes. Representative Buckby. Buckby votes yes. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes no. Representative DiGio Van Carlo. Rep DiGio Van Carlo votes yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the negative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Representative Hampton votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Hampton votes yes. Thank you. Representative Lemieux. Representative Lemieux votes yes. Representative Leeper. Representative Leeper votes yes. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio is a no. Representative Williams. Williams, yes. One more time, please. Williams, yes. Thank you. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Wood. Rep 
Representative Yaccarino? Yaccarino, yes to draft. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, uh, so that brings us, um, colleagues, to item B under section four bills um, to vote to draft. This is SB 113, an act authorizing bonds of the state for handicapped accessible platform at the Waterbury stop of the Naugatuck rail line. Um, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, thank you. And is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you. Moved by uh, Mr. Chair Curry, seconded by Representative Exum. Um, this, uh, we heard testimony. Um, the Naugatuck rail line is um, an excursion tourism line that runs uh, from Torrington down to Waterbury with various stops. Um, and the, so it happens the Waterbury stop is not accessible. Um, to those uh, who um, are uh, handicapped. Um, and so this would require them to help them to make a handicapped accessible platform. Uh, com um, comments from uh, committee members. Rep uh, Nucio. I think you're muted, madam. Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a, a question on this. It, why would this not be eligible through a steep grant? I'm, I'm a little concerned that we're talking about issuance of bonds for a grant um, in relation to handicap accessibility to a rail line that should be responsible for ADA compliance. Um, so with regard to the steep grant, um, I think there are a number of um, towns and cities on this uh, this track, this rail, um, and so they uh, have not gone that route. Um, I think that the, the, this is an economic development um, initiative. Uh, I think we heard from the proprietor who was at the end of this um, rail line, uh, who was looking to try to um, allow people who otherwise would not be able to uh, de um, disembarked from the train uh, to make it handicapped accessible. So um, it's an economic development initiative um, uh, in trying to help uh, and allow accessibility to um, all residents or non-residents. I, I would put forward that economic development isn't exempt from ADA compliance. So if there's a need for this to be ADA compliant, then that should be the responsibility of the rail line and the stop to be compliant. So I guess I'm just concerned it's an issuance of bonds to provide a grant when we have other grant opportunities and the actual responsibility should be of the rail line to provide ADA compliance. So I'm gonna be a no on this. I think we should definitely have ADA compliance, but I think there's a better track to get this money than coming up with an issuance of a bond to provide a grant to one stop that is not ADA compliant. But thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, as we work to try to promote tourism in the state um, and scale economic development, uh, I think that's our consideration at, at this time. Are there further comments? Yes, Senator Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I know that this is a motion to draft, but is there an amount that is going to be uh, within the bill that we are looking for here? Yeah, so um, I think initially, uh, Senator Martin, you knew they talked about $50,000 um, because that was not a vetted number. Um, you know, we, we did not identify that. So, you know, whatever the design build uh, expense would be um, has not been totally identified. And so that was the reason for not putting that specific dollar figure in, in the bill. So it's going to be an open end for this thing? So when will oh, that number ever surface? And how, would, how do we know we're not, it's not going to be a million dollars? 
versus $50,000. Um, open end to the extent that it is defined by uh, the construction of handicapped accessible. So there's not gonna be any other bells or whistles attached to this. It is simply um, to make this accessible to those who are um, handicapped. Well, we talking, if I understood your explanation on this, we were talking about nine communities. So are we talking about accessibility to just the Naugatuck stop? Or are we talking about access accessibility in all nine locations? No, this is one location, um, Senator. Uh, yes, and it's the end of the stop. Um, so that is the one area where there is not accessibility. So there's no design at this point. There is no budgeted cost at all. Uh, it has has not been, uh, to my knowledge, designed. It almost seems like we're a little bit premature then. Well, I, I think probably you know the design expense is part of you know this request, and that is why um, it hasn't been done. It's typically a design build model. So typically. And it's usually that there's a budget attached to a design. So there seems to be no, listen, I'm for providing this, you know, accessibility to those that, uh, to the disabled. So, but my concern is that we're voting on sort of an, uh, opening up in a, by not defining the cost of this, uh, we are allowing, uh, we're allowing, uh, I guess, uh, you know, you know, an open checkbook, so to speak. So I've got the hard time voting yes, that I, I want to vote yes, but I'm sort of, all right, you typically, and I'll just use the construction format, is that you know, municipality it puts a budget together, it has an idea, of what it wants to construct, and then makes a presentation to to DAS or to or to the legislature. But they've we they've got some um, an amount. I'm just a little little taken back that there's no budget in place here. I thought there was originally, but I guess not. So I'm a little uh, concerned uh, because this could be a million dollars that we're approving and we would be authorized to do that, or we would be sort of bound a little bit uh, statutorily that we would be obligated to pay that. So um, I'm, I'm gonna be a no, I guess. I was gonna be a yes, but I think without that information, um, I don't see w why we would be doing this. Oh, thank you, Senator Martin. Uh, much appreciated remarks. Um, as this moves along, we will uh, focus in to define the exact number. Um, it's about, you know, scaling tourism. It's not a municipality. It's, a, 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 as I said, an excursion line. But I, I do hear you, sir. Thank you. Much appreciated. And we have, um, yeah, hi, Representative Yaccarino. You have the floor, sir. Just a couple of questions. What in the normal procedure, this would go in front, have to, it has to be shovel ready. The planes have to be drawn up ahead of time. Got to be shovel ready to get any bonding. I think we changed that procedure about four years ago. So I just, I mean, I agree with Senator Martin. We, we want to see this happen, but I don't think it's going to happen until those planes are put in place. And it's still going to have to go in front of either the bond commission um, or binding ends. Um, but yeah. This, we, this, we don't have any of this in place. Uh, I'm saying it's not, I don't know if they'll look at it until it's in place, the plan and shovel ready. Uh, thank you for your comments, Senator Vaccarino. Yeah, Vaccarino. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, tongue tied this morning. That's okay. Um, yeah, no, this clearly is going to move to uh, finance revenue. Um, and, sir, I think if I recall, you're on there and um, you can be our good steward. And I'm also on the bonding subcommittee, but I don't, I think that's more for capital, although this is capital. I just, I want to support it, but I, 
there's no real plan. Well, we'll try to make it so you can support it, sir. <laughs> Love your support. Thank you. Um, and we have, let's see, um, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, Rep Buckby. Too many buttons for me to push here. This is driving me nuts, all these buttons to push. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think in listening to some of this, um, uh, I'm, I support the concept of what we're trying to do here and what you're trying to, uh, to do with that. Um, anything we can support in that community. And again, with rail, I'm, I'm supportive of. My concern is where that dollar amount is and where that's going to come from, too. Um, I'm going to, uh, I understand we need to draft this in order to get a language on it to start with. We don't have a language here. We're, we're voting to draft this. Um, so I'm going to vote no to flag for myself, uh, although I like the concept. I'm going to vote no to flag for myself and uh, uh, see what that number comes back to and where those dollars are coming from. That, that's, that's kind of my concern is the, the financial responsibility of it. Um, it's, not a, it's not a no against the general concept by any means. Um, as we've discussed in, in, with this bill before, I'm, I'm supportive. I just want to make sure that we're uh, handling all this uh, with fiscal responsibility as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, and thank you, Rep Buckby, and that's what the process is all about. So duly noted. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't see any other hands, Madam Clerk. Have I missed anyone? Um, seeing none, if you uh, could kindly call the roll. Senator Hartley. Yes, Senator Hartley in the affirmative. Representative Curry. Representative Curry in the affirmative. Senator Cohen. Cohen votes yes. Representative Rochelle. Representative Rochelle votes yes. More time, please. Representative Rochelle votes yes. Senator Martin. Senator Bar Martin votes no. Representative Buckby. Representative Buckby votes no. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson votes no. Representative Dijo Van Carlo. Rep Dijo Van Carlo, yes. Representative Exum. Representative Exum votes yes. Representative Fusco. Representative Fusco votes in the negative. Representative Garibay. Representative Garibay votes yes. Representative Hampton. Hampton votes yes. One more time, please. Representative Hampton votes yes. Thank you. Representative Lanou. Representative Lanou votes no. Representative Leeper. Senator McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Senator Miller. Senator Needleman. Representative Nuccio. Representative Nuccio votes no. Representative Williams. Representative Williams. Yes. Senator Sampson. Representative Thomas. Representative Wood. Rep Wood votes yes. One more time, please. Rep Wood votes yes. Thank you. Representative Yaccarino. Representative Yaccarino votes no. All set, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, and so at this point, um, we're thinking, let's see, we keep the vote open. We're missing a few members. Are we not, Madam Clerk? That's correct, if you do. Yeah. Um, and so would uh, two o'clock um, be reasonable, um, Madam Clerk? Yeah. Um, okay. So our vote will stay open until two o'clock today. Um, and I would just like to note that uh, our next um, time up will be uh, next Tuesday for a public hearing um, on our remaining uh, 
bills that will come before the committee. And we typically are what, 11 o'clock, Ginger? That's correct. Okay. Um, and are there comments from um, uh, co-chair uh, Curry? Uh, nothing further, just uh, thank you everyone for your time today and looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, sir. And Senator Martin? Nothing from me, Madam Chair, but thank you and thank you to everybody. Thank you. And Rep. Uh, Buckby? Thank you, Madam Chair. I think it was a healthy debate and uh, looking forward to see the rest of this and how it goes. Thanks. Thank you all. Um, and so at this point, um, colleagues, we will be in recess. Thanks and see you all next round. Best. Ginger, hey, Ginger I, I think I left that last vote. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and Rep you. Wood is here too for any missed votes as well. Rep okay, Thomas just, too. Just give me one second. <laughs> Okay, uh, Representative Leeper, I do need you for that last one, SB 113. I mean, Representative Leeper votes yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, girl. Representative Thomas for that last one. I think I missed the last two. Um, yep. Oh, so Representative Thomas votes yes. And for SB 112? Representative Thomas votes yes. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Uh, Rickwood, I need you for SB 112. It was second to last. Rickwood, I need you for the second to last. SB one. Let me yes. And let me just double check any others. Uh, House Bill five one two five. Yes. House Bill five one two three. Yes. House Bill 5122. Yes. Senate Bill 219. Yes. And you're all set. Thank you. No problem. Did I miss any, Ginger? Double check, no, no, give me one second. You didn't miss any, you're all set. Thank you so much. Have no a problem. good day. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Senator. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry, I was uh, tied up in the labor committee all, all day. So yeah, no, no problem. Did you take a look at the agenda? I, I have them all in front of me. I can list them off for you if it's easier, or you can call them off to me. Um, I'll call them off. Just no problem. Yep. Um, so we'll start with SB 97. I am a no. Okay, SB 98. I am a yes. Um, SB 100? No. SB 219? I am a no on that one also. 
House Bill 5122. I am a no. House Bill 5123. I am a yes. Uh, House Bill 5125. I am a yes again. House Bill 5264. I am a no on that one. House Bill 5267. I am a no. Uh, am I, do I have it right that 5266 was held? Yes, that's correct. All right, thank you. S Senate Bill 112. I am a no. And Senate Bill 113. I'm actually a yes on that one. Okay. So you're all set? Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. No problem. Have a good Have a great day.
Hi. Oh, that loud. It yelled at me. Not you. The, the, the iPad. I'm, I'm on the um, other hearing right now, the energy one. Uh, um, did you take a look at the agenda or would you like me to pull it up? No, just pull it up and tell me how the votes went. Hold on one second. I just got to text somebody something. Oh, were there any uh, contested items on this? Um, there are a couple. Um, the first one, SB ninety seven, we got a few, um, a few no's. Uh, same with, let's see, uh, House Bill five one two two. House Bill 5264 and Senate Bill 113. The rest of them all kind of were pretty even with uh, yeses. So I'm, I'm okay with um, the, all the ones that were not contested. Um, okay, so we'll just, we'll have to go in order. Okay. So uh, for Senate Bill 97. Who was opposed to that? Um, I, I don't think that I can go over that right now. Okay. Was it um, largely the aren't closed yet? Okay. Was it largely on partisan lines? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm I'm a yes. Okay, Senate Bill ninety eight. Um, yes. Senate Bill 100. I'm a yes. Hold on one second. Senate Bill 219. I'm a yes. House Bill 5122. Uh, did that vote go along uh, party lines? Is that the, one of the ones that's flagged? Yeah. My colleagues, the Democrats were for that and the Republicans were not. That's about right. Okay, so I'm a yes. Uh, House Bill 5123? Yes. 5125? Um, this will help me with my livestock, so I'm a yes. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Five two six four. I'm assuming the same on this, I'm a yes. Five two six seven. Can you uh, scroll that one down again for me? Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. So we're at five two six seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this doesn't specifically mention any arts in organizations, does it? Not aware off the top of my head. Right now, I can pull up the language if you'd like. Um, no, I'm going to take a pass on this one. I'm not going to vote yes or no. I'm just not going to vote. Okay. House Bill 5123. I'm a uh, proposed bills vote to draft 112. I'm a yes. House Bill 113. I'm a yes on 113. All right, you're all set. Thank you. Bye-bye, Ginger. Have a nice day. You too,
Hi, Ginger. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks, thanks for the invite. Good, good. Appreciate you giving me a heads up on that. Yeah. Um, so it's just SB100. Yeah, that's it. What's, I'm going to vote no on that. Okay. All right. You're all set. Thanks so much. No problem. Have you will. You too. Bye bye. Hi, Ginger. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, did you take a look at the bills that you uh, missed out? Uh, no, I thought you would have that. Yeah, no, I do. I just, if you want me to pull up the agenda, I can. So it's 5267. Yep. Senate um, Bill 12 and Senate Bill 13. You have to excuse me. I have a lot going on. Okay. No, no, you're fine. Um, I have it up here if that's yeah, I have it. It's um uh, nope, I have it. Okay. Oh, that's a yes. Or which one? Five two six seven. Okay. I didn't vote on five two six four. Um I have let me see. They were discussing it when I got when I had to leave. Oh, you're right, yeah. So 5264 is what for you? I'm sorry? What are you voting on? I'm voting, 5, 2, 6, yeah, right. You don't have that, right? Because that's not the list that you, I was given by my aide. Yeah, there was just one missing. Okay, 5264, that's a yes. We're holding 5266, 5, right? 5266, we're holding? We're holding 5266, that's right. Okay. So 5267, I said that was a yes? Yep. Proposed bills to be drafted, 112. Yep. That's a yes. Okay. And 113 is a yes. Okay. All right. Yep, that's correct. You're all set. Right. Thank you. No problem. Have a good one.